Welcome to LabMist.com and our lab video series on the IPv6 on Cisco router. You can find a complete list of IPv6 video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will be configuring two types of point-to-point -point tunnel to transport IPv6 traffic across the IPv4 network. And those are manual and GRE tunnel. And we will look at when to use one over the other using EIGR PV6 and ISIS V6 as our examples. Now for our lab topology, we have router R1 and R3 each with an IPv6 network island behind them. And in the middle, we have IPv4 network with EIGRP enabled to allow reachability between R1 and R3 loopback 0. We also have a Wireshark machine set up to capture a packet on R3 interface, so later on we can look at some packet encapsulation. So the goal of this lab is to set up a point-to-point -point tunnel to provide connectivity between our IPv6 network islands across the IPv4 network. So let's look at our task number one, manual tunnel with static routes. So we need to configure a manual tunnel between R1 and R3 to provide connectivity between their loopback 1. And the tunnel traffic must be sourced from loopback 0. And we need to configure a static route to provide routing across the tunnel. Okay, so first let's hop on to router 1. Since all the traffic is going to be sourced from router 1 and router 3 loopback 0, let's do a quick connectivity check with the ping. So R1 pinging R3 loopback 0, which is 172.16.0.3, sourcing from its own loopback 0. You can see this pingable because we have EIGRP enable here. So start with our tunnel configuration with interface tunnel. Let's do number one for the tunnel. And for the IPv6 address, let's go back and take a look at our diagram. Here's our prefix 2010013 slash 64. So to configure the IP is IPv6 address 2010013 colon colon. And on this side, it's used one slash 64. And then tunnel source loop back zero and then we have to specify the destination of the tunnel which is r3 loop back zero the ip is 172.16.0.3 and then for a manual tunnel we need to set the tunnel mode from the question mark to be ipv6 ip which means the ipv6 packet is going to write over directly on ipv4 packet and then we need to configure static route to provide routing. And that needs to point to R3 loopback 1, which is 2001300 slash 64. So it will be 2013 slash 64. And just point it out tunnel 1. Okay, now if you do show IPv6 interface tunnel 1, just to look at the tunnel that we just configured. Here we see the status of the tunnel is up with the link local address that is automatically set to use the sourced interface IPv4. You can see right here with R1 loopback 0, 172, 16, which is 10 in hex, and then 0, 1 that's coded within the link local address. And here we have a global unicat address that we manually configure 2010131. So that's all the configuration that we need on R1. Now we need to jump to R3 and complete similar set of configuration with interface tunnel 1, IPv6 address 2001.0.0.13 and on the R3 side ends with 3 slash 64. Tunnel source loopback 0 and then tunnel destination pointing to R1 loopback 0, which is 172.16.0.1. And again, tunnel mode IPv6 over IP. Wait for that. Looks like it's already up. And static route pointing to R2 loopback 1, which is 2001.1 slash 64. So 2001.1 slash 64, sending out tunnel 1. Okay, again, if you show IPv6 interface tunnel 1, you see the embedded IPs for the source interface loopback 0 as part of the link local address of the tunnel, AC1003. And here again is the global unicast address 2100133. So at this point, if you're trying to ping the other side from R3, which is 2001 
one, you can see that it's pingable because the tunnels on both sides are up. And before I actually do the test ping, sourcing from loopback one to R1 loopback one, let me start our washer capture. So we can take a look at the encapsulated packet. So here, let's try that. I believe it's the first interface. Let's click start and then trying to ping 2001 one, one, sourcing from loopback one. For some reason it's failing. So let's take a quick look at our capture. You can see right here, the packet actually went out. So let's see why. Oh, there you go right here. It looks like I have a typo on the static routes. So let's fix that real quick. And that should have been 2001.3 for R3. And let's try the ping one more time. And you can see now we have successful ping. So let me hop over to Wireshark and stop the capture and take a look at the actual packet here from 2001.3.3, just the IPv6 going towards 2001.1.1. And if you look at the headers, you can see the outside IP headers, IPv4, sourcing from 172.16.03, which is R3 loopback 0, as we specify in the tunnel configuration. And the destination is the R1 loopback 0, which is 172.16.01, as specified in the destination configuration of the tunnel. And then right after that is the IPv6 header that contains the actual source and destination in IPv6. And then it's just a regular ICMPv6 ping request. Okay, so you can see how the IPv6 headers just stack right on top the IPv4 header right here when you do the manual tunnel or the mode IPv6 IP. Okay, so then we can try to do a telnet, how that works with telnet. 2001 1 1 sourcing loopback 1. So you can see we can hit the router as well, although we haven't had the VTY configuration set. So actually let's do that real quick with live VTY04, path or Cisco and lock in, up arrow, Cisco, you can see we get dropped right into R1 prompt. Since we can now ping from R3 to R1, we should be able to ping from R1 to R3 as well. So R1 ping 2001, 3. 3 sourcing loopback 1. You can see that we can ping that also. So that's it for task number 1. So moving on to task number 2 with manual tunnel with EIGRPv6. Now that we have the tunnel between R1 and R3 established, we now we need to configure EIGRPv6 between R1 and R3 and advertise that loopback 2 across the tunnel and then we need to verify connectivity between their loopback 2. Okay, so getting back on R1 to enable the EIGRPv6, we need to first enable EIGRP on the interface, on the relevant interface. First we have the tunnel1 interface with the command IPv6, EIGRP, and we're just going to choose AS number 1, and this is to enable EIGRP on the interface, as well as loopback2, that we need to advertise loopback2, so we need to enable that as well. And then we need to get under the IPv6 router, EIGRP, one, we're going to do passive default to make sure all of the interfaces by default do not start doing a neighbor discovery. And then we're going to selectively enable EAGRP neighbor discovery over the tunnel one. So no passive tunnel one. And that should be all we need. So if you do show IPv6 EAGRP interface and you will see we only have tunnel 1 listed, although we're going to be also advertising tunnel 2. So now with router 3, before I go ahead and enable EIGRP, let's start our packet capture. So here, continue without saving. So tunnel 1, again, IPv6 EIGRP 1, interface loopback 2, IPv6 EIGRP 1, and then we need to get under the routing process with passive default, and then no passive tunnel one. Okay, and now we have the adjacency up. So if we do show IPv6, EIGRP neighbor, we should be seeing R1 being a neighbor, and you can see use the R1 link local address on the tunnel one. 
which is FE80AC101. And the adjacency is currently up for that. And if we do show IPv6 route EIGRP, we would expect to see R1 loop back to address, which is 201101. Okay, it's just right here. If you look at on our diagram, 201101, R1 loop back to. Okay, which means if you're trying to ping 201101, one sourcing from R3 loop back to. You can see those are pingable and let's stop our packet capture and take a quick look by scrolling up and just to look at some of the packet that we have captured so far here we have since it ends with three we know that's coming from r three sending a multicast hello packets to the multicast address of ff zero two a which is the eigrp known multicast i p v six address. And here we are also seeing hello packet coming back from R1. Look further into the hello packet here. You can see IPv4 on the outside and then right after this IPv6. And for the payload we have Cisco EIGRP as our protocol. And if you look inside the IP version 6 header, you can see right here it has the next header indicating it's an EIGRP header. And inside the EIGRP, we have hello interval autonomous system one because both sides need to agree on that version two. And then we have some of the regular EIGRP parameter like K values and hold time, just 15 by default. And then that's for the hello packet for the updates. It's pretty similar with IPv4, IPv6 header, and then EIGRP header. And here, if you look at this update packet, you will see it contains the actual routes that's being advertised. This particular packet is coming from R3. So you can see how R3 is advertised right here, internal route. It's loop back to, which is 201301. Okay, it contains router ID, metrics, next top, prefix length, and all of its attributes. What we want to look for next is our ICMP. Scroll a little bit down right here. When we're trying to ping from R3 loop back to to R1 loop back to, and it looks just like what we saw with the static route that we did since we're still using the manual tunnel. Again, IPv6 stack on top of IPv4 and then ICMP request and reply packet. Okay, so you can see that EIGRP IPv6 works fine across the tunnel since it writes over the IPv6 and it has the protocol number for IPv6. And you can see it is that we saw just now it's a protocol number 88 for EHRP. Okay, now if you're trying to do telnet on R3 to 1001101, one sourcing from loopback2, you can see that it's working as well. And again, just to make sure we have a bi-directional connectivity pinging from R1, 2013013, sourcing from loopback2, you can see R1 can ping that as well. Okay, so now that we have reachability between R3 and R1 loopback 2, that completes our task number 2.